you know, everybody says that uh, Terminator is just a movie, Star Trek is just a television show, iRobot is just a movie, but let me tell you something. All the technology that was um, demonstrated in Star Trek from the 1960s version exists today. As a child, I was reading a lot of science fiction, so I would come across robots and AI kind of stuff. Isaac Asimov, Foundation Trilogy, uh, I could list a number of books. Um, then in 1968, the first time I saw 2001 Space Odyssey, I was of course as blown away as many people were. It was shortly thereafter when I was uh, studying design and design engineering that I ran into a uh, work with a uh, systems programmer who had already been involved in AI kind of stuff, at least reading about it. And he introduced me to the big names, the, the folks who 10 years before that at a conference, a summer conference at Dartmouth uh, University had put together the first artificial intelligence program. Uh, got names like Marvin Minsky and Claude Shannon. Uh, these are the big names, and they st have stuck in my mind ever since. But AI still seemed kind of far off. It was a it was science fiction. There are a number of things about AI that interested me then, and even more so now. I mean, the first is just the technological challenge of creating a an artificial consciousness. You know, certainly appealed to my more engineering, techy side, uh, but also to my more humanist artist side, the philosophical and sociological and psychological biological questions of what is consciousness? How did consciousness develop in this little quadrant of the galaxy? What is intelligence? What is mind? These are things that any you know, curious person is going to want to know about. What they're trying to achieve is to create machines that can interpret input the way humans interpret input. Now, when you're working with a computer now, you, you interface with the unit. It has to be translated into terms that the computer can understand. It manipulates that information. Then it needs to be translated back into information that we understand. What the scientists are trying to do is trying to input information and have it interpreted the way humans interpret input, like visually, audially, you know, what I'm saying, uh, century using olfactories, you know, it, they, there is no middleware, so to speak, is that's what they're working on. They're really trying to mimic the neural pathways of the human mind. Problem is that they can mimic it, but they don't even truly fully understand the human mind or the human brain. There's nothing harder to predict in the future. Let's assume that that's true. I think that we will want to look more closely at what kinds of jobs will disappear, what jobs might replace those, because in the past, most economists have, have poo-pooed the idea that automation of any kind was gonna do anything but increase the number of jobs. Like when cars were first being mass produced, horse and carriage trade, the feed and grain makers were losing their jobs but it opened up a whole new industrial era where lots and lots of people got reasonably well off making new things for the automobile industry. The question is, will the same thing happen with AI and robotics as they remove jobs and hold job classes from, from people's ability to be employed? And it's not just hamburger flippers being replaced at McDonald's by robots that flip hamburgers, but radiologists who are replaced by AIs that can do much better pattern recognition on x-rays. Have you been to a CVS or a Target? They already have automated checkout, and who the heck wants to deal with that uh, cashier with the four-inch nails who doesn't want to do her job anyway? So, what do you think businesses are gonna do? They're not gonna have to deal with people calling out, sick, poor customer service, I mean, if they're not going to get ser customer service anyway, you might as well have a machine and then you don't have to pay it. <laughs> so yeah, I, full, I wholeheartedly believe that, you know, we're going to see a lot of jobs disappear.
They've got medical um, technology now that can accurately diagnose illness and prescribe treatment. Okay, they're, they have that in the works. They have uh, artificial intelligence that is going to save the lives of our servicemen because it's going to start to replace our pilots and our drones are going to be, become more intelligent where the pilot will be sitting miles away from the battlefield and he'll be able to control it remotely. But a lot of the technology that's involved with this um, smart uh, weaponry already thinks for itself on many levels and the reaction times are going to be much faster than in humans. So yes, I think it's going to help us, but with that said, we have to tread carefully. We want to reduce the environmental impact in order to save the Earth. We have uh, several technology to create a better uh, society. Mechanical engineers can do a lot of stuff including generating energy, transforming energy, distributing energy, and uh, uh, electrical engineer can use the energy as uh, electricity. Uh, environmental engineer, most important part, how we can reduce solid waste. Those kind of technology are uh, very, very helpful to achieve that goal.